it's the war hipster here coming at you with another contrast plus painting tutorial and today we are painting the fabulous wonderful new Crute war shaper from the Crute army set or Crute hunting pack that games workshop have sent me early to build up and paint for all of you and that is exactly what we are going to be doing today it's absolutely wonderful i think this is fantastic and we're going to be painting it up so massive thank you to them and he's been primed in Wraithbone. And the colour that we're going to be using first is going to be some Agrax Earthshade. And we're going to be applying this over the top of, well, all of our Crute skin, apart from his very soft little inner tummy. So we're just going to start down here at the feet. I'm going to prime, uh, prime this, apply this, just like this. over the top So with all that Agrax Earthshade applied, we're then going to take some Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to apply this over his belly. Like so. And then what we're also going to do is apply this over the top of his knees. His feet. So, and then around the top of his head, kind of around here, we're also going to apply this. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown, and we're going to apply this over quite a lot of details here on the war shaper so we're going to be applying this over top of kind of any of his hard leather of which there's a ton of this so I recommend 
having your box art open. We've got things like the sort of armory bit. Just like that. We've got the ones on the legs and then the arms as well and on his chest. But what we're also going to do here is we're going to apply this over the top of the inside of his cloak, not the outside though. So with that all done, we're then going to take some Gore Grunter fur. I'm going to apply this over the top of the remaining leather details. So with that Gore Grunter fur applied, we're then going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Cygore Brown and Blood Angels Red. And we're going to apply this over the top of the cloak. Don't worry about covering over the spines. That's absolutely fine. So with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion. I'm going to apply this over the top of any of the War Shaper's hair. Or quills, as they probably are. Like this. And there's a couple of little quills on the body as well. However, what we're also going to do with the Black Legion is we're going to apply this over the top of the quiver. So with that then done, what we want to do is we want to take some Black Templar. I'm going to use this to do a couple of different things. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use this to pick out any of his kind of toenails and fingernails. Like that sort of thing. And we'll finish off the foot. Like so. Then what we're also going to do with the Black Templar is we're going to apply this over his chin. We're going to do a little bit of blending here, so we want to bring it out to around about there. We're then going to wash the brush, touch off the water, and then just there. We 
You just want to blend out that transition just a little bit. It's got a bit of a fade going on. And then we want to do the same thing on the other side. Like that. Wash the brush. Touch off the water. And then give it the blends. Like so. And then, in addition, with the black Templar, what we're going to do is we're going to use this over the top of all those little quills and spines on the cloak. With that then done, I actually also applied it to the pistol handle as well, but what we're going to do is we're now going to take some skeleton horde and we're going to apply this over the top of the string on the bow. Like that, and we're going to apply this over the string on the triskel. top of the shafts of the arrows So with that skeleton horde applied, we're then going to take some Asaman blue and we're going to apply this over the top of the fletchings. And with that now done, what we're going to do is going to take some thinned down lead belcher. And we're going to apply this over almost all of our remaining details. So what we're looking for is we're looking for things like any kind of mechanical parts of the weapon. Just here. We're looking for the main part of the bow. The armor. Around here, the blades, like so, and any other details you want to be silver. However, there is another metallic. With all of that lead belcher now applied, what we're going to do is going to take some thinned down retributor armor and we're going to apply this over top of all of the remaining details. So we've got all the little kind of hanging jewelry bits, like that one there. We've got these kind of little bangly bits. So 
So with all that retributor armor applied, all of our base coats are now on on our war shaper. So it is time to add some shades. Now the first of these is going to be some Reichland flesh shade. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the dark brown leather and all of the gold. And we'll be applying this over the top of the ready outside of the cape. And we will also apply this over the inside of the cape, thinking about it, because it is the dark brown leather as well. With all that Reichland flesh shade applied, we then take some Nulm oil and we're going to apply this over the top of the silver. And the Black Templar gun handle. So with that, our Kroot war shaper is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and he's looking pretty good. However, we're not going to leave him there. We're going to take him to the next level. I'm going to do this by adding some highlights. Now, the first of these is going to be some thinned down screaming skull. I'm going to use this to highlight well, quite a few details. So the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to use this to highlight all of his skin. So start up here on the face picking out all the edges like that sort of thing however what we're also going to do with the screaming skull is we're going to use this to just highlight areas such as the bowstring that we did with skeleton horde With all that screaming skull applied, what we're then going to do is take a tiny, tiny little bit of Blood Angel's Red. And we're going to apply this over the eyes.
with that tiny amount of Blood Angels Red applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. And we're going to use this to highlight every black detail that we have, but this is going to include the beak, of course. You just want to be really careful there. Get a nice straight line. Like this. But naturally, there's a pile of blood, black details here. So, we're also going to be applying this over the top of all of the quills. And over the quiver, but not the handle of the pistol. That comes next. So with all that Dawnstone applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Administratum Grey. I'm going to use this to add some little spot highlights. So we're looking for the sharpest points in all that black. Just like that sort of thing. However, when it comes to the handle of the pistol, we're going to draw lots of little lines to give it a kind of wood grain. heavy just here on this corner so I'm just gonna remove some of that with my brush and then come back in be a little bit more precise So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Night Quester flesh. And we're going to use this to highlight all of the leather. Well, all the dark leather, not the not the really bright Gorgon to fur stuff. But what we are also going to do with the Night Quester flesh is we're going to use this to highlight our red cloak. Both inside and out. So just take your time, because there's a lot of this here. So with all that Night Quester flesh applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Deathclaw Brown. I'm going to use this 
to highlight our gorgon to fur areas. So with that all done, he's looking pretty good. We've only got a couple of highlights left to do, but as you can see, he's looking fantastic. But before we get to the last couple of highlights, we're actually going to do another shade of Null Oil. And this is just going to be on the chest plate here. So we want it to just be this, that little bit darker. Just like that. Just whilst we're waiting for that second coat of null oil to dry on the breastplate, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of sort of freehand. So, the colour we're going to be using is some thinned down Corax White. And on this shoulder here, what we want to do is we want to draw a little bit of a kind of line for that tribal marking that you see on some of the crude. So we're going to start just here along this edge like that by by the kind of carved runes then what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little bit of a gap of silver on the next rune over and then we're going to draw a tiny little line coming out like this and then we're going to draw the next line coming along like this so we've effectively got a lightning bolt pattern going on just there as you can see then on the other side we're going to basically do the same thing along this line Just here. Like that. Bring it along a little bit further. Leave a little gap between this rune here. And draw a little line. Like so. Just gonna examine it from this angle. one up here there we go and then with the Corax white basically going to block in the rest of the armor panel Like that we're going to leave it to dry and then do the second coat With that second coat of white now added it's a nice strong white that we got there so what we're going to do is we're going to take some black legion next and we're going to draw in some of those markings so we're going to start up here what we're going to do is draw a little arrow or a little line like that this side as well
until we get a triangle. Like that. Then, what we're going to do is leave a little gap by drawing a little dot just here. Underneath the tip of that triangle. Then we're going to draw another one. Just underneath it. triangle And then underneath that, we're going to do a fourth little triangle, like that sort of thing. And then, what we're going to do is over here by our little kind of lightning bolt basically going to draw a lightning bolt that follows that follows that line coming down like this Cross like that. side so with that now done it's looking pretty cool and it means what we can do now is we can take some thinned down iron breaker and we can use this to highlight all the silver sort of thing however when it gets to the chest plate itself we darkened it down for a reason so what we want to do is we want to add lots of little kind of scratches and things just by kind of almost stippling this on So that iron breaker all applied, as you can see, what we're now going to do is going to apply our final highlight, which is going to be some thinned down 
Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight all the gold. So with that Liberator Gold applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Asaman Blue. And we're going to apply this over the top of any of these kind of flat, wide kind of toggles in the hair. Or quills. We've been over this already, Josh. So with that now done, he's pretty much finished. There's just one last bit that we can do just for a little bit of extra fun, which is to take some thinned down Blood Reaver flesh. I'm gonna use this to add some little head markings over the top of his head. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little kind of, almost like an arrow Going like that across his forehead. Like so. I'm going to add another one. Just there, like that. And then we're going to add kind of almost like a U shape just over, excuse me, one second, <laughs> just over the back here. that sort of thing. So with the base now complete, our Crute Warshaper is finished and I think he looks really, really fantastic. Now I have learned quite a few things whilst painting this one. Firstly, this is the first painting tutorial to happen with the new camera. So I had to learn a lot about that one and I've made some changes after the next video of this one. Um, but it was really fun painting this guy. It's actually quite simple apart from that freehand, but yeah, really, really effective. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do, as without you, I wouldn't be able to keep making these Contrast Plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks, just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.